we've scoured the internet to bring you the ultimate in life hacks, bonkers inventions and crazy contraptions designed to make your life easier, more exciting and definitely more fun. And we've summoned a team of experts with science brains and funny bones to explain everything. From the ridiculous to the sublime. And make sure you strap in for the grand finale at our very own Hack HQ, where we create and construct an epic stunt, our very own super-sized solutions to life's problems, big and small. With the help of Mike Sansom, pyrotechnician, chemist and engineer, and his human guinea pigs, Marcus Bronzy and Stephen Grant. For now, sit back, relax and put your feet up. Let us do the hard work so you don't have to. This is how hacks work. The average person spends 35% of their life at work, so it's more important than ever to have an arsenal of tips and hacks to make this time go as painlessly as possible. Do you have an office food thief? So if you're always running late and hate the office politics, then keep watching because we've got some amazing videos and demonstrations to help you thrive in your nine to five. From desks that get you moving, to an entire breakfast in a mug. And as our Hack HQ, we'll be testing out a bike that will transform your journey to work. The perfect commuter's hack, isn't it? If your least favourite part of the working day is your commute, this first hack doesn't just cut your journey down, it cuts it out completely. Introducing Transformers for the working man. The Decepticons are approaching, quick! Let's transform! <laughs> necessity is the mother of all invention, and this was born from the very lazy necessity of not wanting to get up. On average, we spend about 40 minutes a day commuting to work. So that works out as 157 hours per year, and that means over our whole lives, we probably spend about a year of our time commuting. What's perhaps more shocking about this is we probably spend over 150,000 euros just on commuting in our lifetime. People who say you can sleep when you're dead don't understand just how amazing sleep is. A Dreamfield hack hit. If you're one of the 834 billion people who have to wear a tie to work, this next hack could help you fit in that much needed extra cup of coffee in the morning. Twist, pull, round. No, twist it round, up through, no. Over the hand, spin it. Spin it twice? Yeah, then do the thing like that, and then just do that, and then simply do the other thing, and voila! Easy, yeah? The tie is a successor of the cravat, and supposedly the word cravat comes from Croat soldiers in France who would wear this piece of material uh, around their neck as part of their uniform. That is one formal piece of combat wear. Um... What? I've messed it up already. As a piece of clothing, the tie has absolutely no function. In fact, the British Medical Association have suggested that their doctors don't wear ties because they can be a real breeding ground for harmful bacteria. Pointless clothing item, pointless hack. It's a miss. What person could honestly say they don't wish their workday was more exciting? Well, this next pair has quite the solution for you. Ready? <laughs> no, this isn't a really, really, really low-budget version of Cool Runnings. It's a couple of office workers who have decided they need to become indoor bobsledders. On company time, obviously. I've always said that one thing missing from office work is winter sports. I feel a bit sorry for them when they crash, but then I think, really, what do they expect to happen? They may be very brave, they may even be heroes, but office bobsledding is far too dangerous to catch on. A mortally wounded miss. Coming up, Mike will be supercharging his humble work bike and leaving fellow commuters in the dust in our epic hack. If I saw that while I was out commuting, I'd be thinking that person is genuinely uh, a winner in life. So far, we've shown you how to grab an extra 40 winks on a work day and a tie hack you don't even have to try at. What? I've messed it up already. But if, like most, you have a job where you actually have to leave your bedroom, 
you'll want to stick around as we guide you through the perils of the rest of the workday in the big bad world. Have you ever wished prepping your workday brekkie wasn't so time consuming? Well, this hack is definitely not for mugs. Actually, it is for mugs, because we're showing you how to cook the perfect omelette in one. Ah, the humble microwave, the cornerstone of any workday when you're in a rush. You might notice all your food is quite soft and pale when it comes out, and that's because you're limited by the temperature that water boils, so about 100 degrees Celsius. You can't go above this, so you can't start to get some of the more crispy coatings you get on a lot of foods. Ready meals, mug cakes, poached eggs and steamed veg, the microwave is the perfect tool for cooking food quick. But how? The microwaves are created behind a fan before being pushed through a grill. Tough start. It's like a big metal microwave disco in there. To make sure that your food heats up evenly, the microwave plate spins, making sure that all of the food passes through the hot spots and heats up. Instead of bouncing off the food, microwaves can travel through until they hit water molecules in the food where they're absorbed. Mmm, radiation. Don't worry, it's totally safe. You're not going to turn into microwave man or anything. This gives the water molecules extra energy and makes them vibrate. It's that vibration that we feel is heat. The vibrating water molecules bump into other molecules and pass energy onto them too, spreading the heating effect. This is the reason you have to let your food stand after heating. You need to allow time for the heat to spread completely through it. So microwaves are good at cooking eggs, but what about other things? When you boil vegetables on a hob, some of the water-soluble micronutrients in the vegetables actually leach out into the water around it. Where in a microwave, because you've not really got that much water in it, there's a much lower risk of that happening. So it can be argued cooking your vegetables in a microwave is healthier. But now, back to the eggs. Eggs, I just think eggs are, are absolutely fantastic. They are the perfect packaged food. This cracking omelette hack proves fast food can be healthy. A microwave miracle and a workday hack hit. The writing's on the wall with this next top tip. Actually, it's on the whiteboard, but you get the idea. You can whitewash your whiteboard mistakes with a little help from some alcohol. Not that kind. All of the dry erase marker that I used up here will not come off. So a little hack that I have for you is get yourself a little uh, paper towel and get some rubbing alcohol. Um, what is rubbing alcohol? I don't know. <laughs> what is that? Is it just alcohol? Yes, I think it is, Laura. Simply take some of the rubbing alcohol and put it onto your paper towel, just like that. Let me put this down here. And then you should be able to just wipe that away. That rubbing alcohol works really well because alcohol is a solvent. So what happens at a chemical level is the alcohol dissolves that ink, which means that then you can wipe it off really, really easily. Most people have alcohol in their homes, and I'm not talking about vodka. I'm talking about hairspray, I'm talking about hand sanitizer. All these products actually contain alcohol, so you can use this hack even if you don't actually have rubbing alcohol at home. And also, most people would have heard of this hack about 10 years ago, I reckon. Elbow grease is what my father would always say. Use some elbow grease. And uh, what you, you learn over time is that that means just rub harder. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? My definition of the word amazing is completely different to this guy's. Did you know you can remove permanent marker with alcohol? Of course you did, because you haven't been living in a cave for 30 years. A fairly wide of the marker, miss. This next hack puts an end to lunchtime bandits in the workplace once and for all. Do you have an office food thief? Well, we have the answer to stop him from stealing your food. Are you ready? I'm more ready than I've ever been, enthusiastic, spiky-haired American lady. Do you see it? Yes, someone really needs to calm down on the mini butter packs, too. My sandwich. This clever bag has green tints that look like mold to keep your co-workers disgusted enough to stay away. Good. Don't worry. It's just the bag. It may look like it has mold, but it doesn't. It kind of ruins your food because 
even though it's not been affected by mold, in my head, if I were to go to eat it, I would imagine I was eating mold. So I, I've psychologically ruined my lunch. The reason humans find mold disgusting is actually an evolutionary protection measure. It means that when we see something that's probably going to make us ill, we don't want to eat it. This mouldy mechanism will finally make Linda buy her own lunch. Yes, I'm talking to you, Linda. A hack hit. Right, it's time to head to Hack HQ. This time, Mike is planning on pimping up some pedals to make a brute of a commute a lot more enjoyable. Mike. Steven. Are we going on a bike ride? Or something like that, yeah. I'm up for that, but I'm a little bit curious of your steed of choice. This looks like something from the 1970s. How are you going to ride this? It's got pull brakes. It looks like the sort of thing you should be delivering onions to a French village on. Very droll, Stephen. Yeah, so this is our work hack, right? OK. Yeah, this is my commuter's bike. This is going to get me from A to B, back home, really, really fast. I'm a little concerned because it's you, though, Mike. Mm -hmm. Why are there fire extinguishers on the back of the bike? So these things are going to propel me really, really fast. How? <laughs> Let me show you. So, Mike, tell me then, how is a fire extinguisher going to propel your bike? Right, so this is a carbon dioxide fire extinguisher. Okay. It's under extremely high pressure. It's great for putting out fires, but uh, it... Fires. I'm a little worried. Are you going to set me on fire? Not this time, no. Great. We're going to harness the energy from this CO2 to propel my bike along. There's enough pressure in that to propel you and a bicycle? Yeah, give it a go. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. <laughs> The carbon dioxide in this fire extinguisher is at the equivalent pressure of a human being 100 metres underwater. See, now, there wasn't that much pressure just there because there's a diffuser, so it hits a right angle, goes through the diffuser and then comes out as a nice plume of gas. If I take that off, that wouldn't stay in your hand. Really? It would just yeah, fire across the room? it would fire across the room. OK. Mm. And so, with this in your bike, you will just shoot off down the road? Well, I'm hoping so, yeah. Right. Yeah. I still think I'd be quicker than you. Well, let's see. Let me show you a bit about CO2. Okay. So you saw it coming out there as a gas. If I put this towel over the top, I can actually collect that gas. This plume of gas is extremely cold, so much so that it freezes water droplets in the air, forming ice. <sighs> and there you go. What is that? So that's dry ice. That is solid carbon dioxide. Oh, right. Let me show you what I can do with it. OK. Put on your safety glasses. Happily. I've got some boiling hot water here. Right. I'll pour into the beaker. And now I'm going to get some dry ice and shove it inside. Wow. It's like every famous chemistry lab that you've ever seen on TV, right? Oh, that's a potion. When dry ice heats up, it goes straight from solid to gas, never becoming a liquid. This is called sublimation. When you put dry ice in water, the solid carbon dioxide will turn into gas, and that's what we see bubbling out. OK, Mike, this is a lot of fun, but what has this got to do with our bikes and our hack? Well, I've shown you the dry ice, which is a lot of fun, but when that is in the fire extinguisher, it's under extreme pressure, and I'm going to harness that energy and I'm going to beat you in a race. Interesting you say that. I don't think it'll happen, but I'll happily watch you fail. Come back later to see how this completely safe, sensible commuter's hack turns out. So far, we've shown you a quick and healthy way to fuel up for a busy day at work and put off sticky fingers in the office fridge. But your working day isn't done yet, because we'll also show you how to turn your office chair into a throne. Before all that, though, I need a coffee. Coffee to workers is like water to fish. They need it constantly or they will die. This amazing hack shows you how to make um, instant coffee. Yes, apparently this person has never heard of a cafetiere. I like the idea of, of making your own coffee bag. I generally don't have filters, so I'd probably use like a tiny sock. So with a tea bag, or a coffee bag in this case, you can really carefully choose how much coffee and how long it's in for. So you tailor the strength and the extraction. You get a great cup. Yes, using a tiny bag is literally the only way you can ration how much coffee you use in a cup, apparently. The main thing this hack misses is 
when do you ever want to have just one cup of coffee? If you make coffee in a cup um, and, uh, and you so ju just literally putting the grounds in with boiling water and give it a stir, apparently if you add just a dash of cold water, it makes all the grounds drop to the bottom. Well, you could spend about four euros on a cafetiere. An average cup of coffee contains about 95 milligrams of caffeine. Caffeine is a central nervous system stimulant that affects your body in numerous ways. It makes certain parts of the brain more active. These areas are involved in planning, attention, monitoring and concentration. Great if you need to get some work done quick. Caffeine also helps you burn fat rather than glycogen stored in the muscles. But that's not all. If you have a coffee before hitting the gym, it can actually help sustain high-intensity exercise. It's not all good, though. Caffeine increases the amount of acid in your stomach, and this may cause heartburn or make you feel a little ill. And too much could also interfere with your intake of calcium, which can lead eventually to bone thinning. As soon as you grind a coffee bean, you expose it to oxygen in the air. And what happens then is it starts to react with those flavoursome chemicals. So the whole taste of your coffee will change over time. This new hack of putting coffee grounds in a small piece of paper is neither a hack or new. A filtered down watery miss. The average office worker spends about five years sat on their office chair. Luckily, we don't all have to sit in chairs like this one, though. This chair, believe it or not, is the after part of this hack. So I want to show you an easy way to gussy up your office chair. If by gussy up you mean burn with fire, then be my guest. That thing is horrendous. I've chosen some French fabric, and all you do is cut it to fit the spaces, and then use a simple table knife and you tuck it in. I'd probably go for that one, because that one is the one that is least going to show up back sweat and tea, which is what your office chair is covered in. Psychological studies have shown that colours in our environment can have quite an effect on us. So blues and greens are supposedly quite calming, red draws attention, and yellow can inspire creativity. I cannot endorse a hack that thinks this chair has any place in civilised society. A huge miss. Now, if you're one of those annoying people who like to keep physically fit, this next video will be of interest. I just wanted to show you my new treadmill desk setup. So, uh, this is it. I've got a treadmill. It was originally a $900 treadmill. Uh, barely used at all. Works pretty good, too. I'd love to see this bloke do some actual work while running on a treadmill. I bet he works in advertising. Yes, this guy has combined tough mental work with physical exercise, for some reason. Is he a sadist? What's wrong with a good old-fashioned sitting down, then, eh? I suppose there's something wrong with that now, is there? I was also a bit worried about the possibility of maybe motion sickness, because if you're trying to concentrate on a screen but your head and body are moving constantly, then this could be a problem as well. What I like to do is pull my duvet around me like a cocoon, like right up to here, but with my arms out like a T-Rex and just sort of work like that and have my laptop really high up. When you sit down all day, your metabolism slows down, so generally speaking, it can cause weight gain. The other thing is, you end up with pooling of blood in the legs, and that can actually end up causing blood clots, which are very dangerous. All oh, right, fair enough. This hack takes two very important things, work and exercise, and combines them to make them both nearly impossible. A hack miss. The clock hits six, and it's time to start that long, boring commute home. Hang on, though. We've got one more hack up our sleeves for you, and it will turn you into a rocket man. If this program could be summed up by one image, it would be a bicycle with a jetpack turbine engine strapped to it and a drinks can as a gas tank. Perfect! This bike is guaranteed to cut down any commute and possibly a few commuters. It has been shown in studies that a commute of over 30 minutes can significantly decrease our productivity at work. i definitely have a go on the jet bike. I want to have a go on the jet bike. The longest commute in the world is thought to be in Bangkok in Thailand, which during rush hour, average traffic speeds are about seven miles per hour. We're talking two hours each way to get to work. 
This bonkers bike hack will have you at work or in bandages in a flash. A daredevil hit! The countdown is over and the fuses are lit. There's no cannon too big, no dynamite too strong for Mike to handle. And with his trusty guinea pig Stephen, he'll try anything so you don't have to. From a drink-powered push bike to an absolutely turbocharged CO2 rocket bike now. Earlier, Mike showed us another use for a fire extinguisher using its freezing qualities. Now it's time to put that knowledge to practical, ridiculous use in our epic hack. Okay. Hmm. Some good work hacks out there, I suppose. This is an amazing commuter hack, though, isn't it? Yeah, and you know what? Commuting needs hacks, I think, because it's such a large chunk of the day. I used to work 40 minutes drive away from where I lived every day. Ten years I did that job, going back and forth. It was an hour and 20 minutes, and I worked out, and I lost a year and a half of my life just sat in a car doing nothing and then walking from the car park, dull as dishwater. Oh. Do you want a hug, Stephen? Rubbish. Right, should we put it to the test? Race time. Mike plus two highly pressurised fire extinguishers versus Stephen on a normal bike. Is this fair? Brakes at the ready, this could get dangerous. In three, two, one, off we go. Time to freeze rubber. Mike's bike is now travelling at an impressive 40 miles per hour. If Stephen was going to switch into another gear, now would be the time. The power of high pressure has won. Oh, no. Yes, well done. Congratulations. I, I honestly thought I was in with a shout, but you you beat me. You're literally the only person who thought that, Stephen. Pretty easy win, really, wasn't it? What a gracious winner. Oh, well, I just rocket-powered bicycle. <laughs> I didn't think you'd be able to manage it, but it genuinely worked. Oh, and you've got yourself a prize for winning. Well done, Mike. Well, well done. I knew I was going to win, so, uh, yeah, let me uh, just well done, you. pop that on there. But, Congratulations, you know, well I did get a prize for the, the runner-up as well. Really? Yeah, there you go. That's genuinely kind of you. Thank You're very you. welcome. Oh, I can't lie. That's, that's really sweet of you. Thank you. I think that's very magnanimous of you. In no way does it show in any way that you're one of those gloating winners. I like people like that. Good. You've gone back up in my good books. The perfect commuter's hack, isn't it? Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll give you that. Uh, and if I saw that while I was out commuting, I'd be thinking that person is genuinely uh, a winner in life, which is you. So, Excellent. Uh, let's head back. He wears it well, ladies and gentlemen. He wears it well. Your working day is done, and our guide to surviving the pitfalls of the nine to five is at an end, too. Finish your coffee, switch off that computer, and head home to put your feet up. You've earned it. We'll see you next time.